So welcome everybody. Uh, as, as Maria said before, it's, it's a pleasure to have the third edition of ALCO. And we are going to start with an amazing talk by uh, Jan Soo Kim. Uh, and the title is A Fine Gordon Bender Knuth Identities and Cylindric Jan Tablos. The stage is yours. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you, organizers, for organizing this wonderful uh, online workshop. And thank you for putting me in the first talk so that uh, I can speak while I'm still awake. So, so this is a uh, joint work with Ji Sun Ho, uh, who is uh, here, and Christian Katantella and Soichi Okada. So this talk, uh, you can see I, I copied this uh, picture or photo uh, of this alcove. Uh, and you can, if, you, if, you, if you look at this, uh, this there's an alcove. And actually in my talk, ICO will appear. So I think my talk is well suited for this uh, workshop. Um, okay, so here is the uh, outline. I'm gonna first talk about some basic uh, definitions and uh, Robinson Shenstead algorithm just a little bit. And I'm gonna show you uh, how we can use a Robinson Shenstead algorithm to connect standard young tableau of uh, bounded height and non-crossing and non-nesting involutions. And I'm gonna introduce cylindric uh, version of st standard Young Tableau. And we're gonna, uh, we, I'm going to show, show you our uh, results on connections between cylindric standard Young Tableau with so some kind of bounded height and width and R non-crossing and R S non-nesting involutions. And after that, uh, I'm going to show you how we discover this result. Um, and then finally, I'm going to talk about this affine golden uh, vendor Knuth ident identities, which is uh, in the part of the title of my talk. So uh, the basic uh, things are like this. So partition is a sequence of uh, positive integers, a weekly decreasing sequence of positive integers, summing to n. And uh, we say the length of uh, lambda is the number of elements here, which are called parts. So I'm going to denote that by L of lambda as usual. So L of lambda is the uh, number of parts in this case, uh, K. And as, uh, uh, so again, as usual, the Young diagram of partition is uh, drawn like this. So Young diagram of the partition 552 usual way. And the standard Young tableau of shape lambda is a filling of the Young diagram with integers 1, 2, up to the size of the partition so that uh, integers are increasing each row and each column like that. And a semi-standard Young tableau uh, is similar, but we may have um, multiple, uh, the same numbers can appear multiple times. And integers are increasing, it weakly increasing each row and strictly increasing each column. And this is uh, often called uh, column strict tableau. But I think semi-standard tableau is more common, but uh, this is also uh, called like this. And in fact, in, in my talk, uh, row strict tableau is uh, more convenient. So we're gonna use row strict tableau as well. So row strict tableau is similar to semi-standard or column strict but uh, integers are strictly increasing each row and weekly increasing each column like that. Okay. Uh, so a robinson shenstein algorithm, I, I'm, I'm sure that most of you are quite well uh, familiar with this uh, algorithm. It's a bijection between permutations and pair, pairs of standard young tableau of uh, same shape. And so if you have a permutation like this, RS, uh, algorithm produces a pair of uh, standard young tableau of the same shape like this. I'm not going to uh, give you the definition or description of the algorithm. It's uh, pretty well known. So if you are interested, you can uh, find it in many places. But uh, what I want to uh, show you is this uh, nice property of this algorithm. So one of the most important properties is that if permutation corresponds to uh, P and Q, two tableau, then its inverse corresponds to Q and P. So as a consequence, we know that if permutation is an involution, then it corresponds to just a single standard Young tableau because it's it just PP, so you can just consider just one 
uh, standard young tableau. So involutions correspond to standard young tableau. And we can think of an involution as a, a matching like this, because an involution has only one cycles and two cycles. So if you connect the two elements in a two cycle, like, a, like an edge, then you can see, uh, we can represent an involution as a matching like this. And RS algorithm uh, uh, gives a connection between this and standard young tableau like this. So you can think of an involution as a matching, is a diagram like this. So I sometimes just use involution or just matching. Okay, and now uh, let's look at standard young tableau with bounded height. So now we have this restriction that uh, standard young tableau has height uh, three or less than three. So here height means the number of rows. So it's just the uh, height if you look at this diagram. So I'm going to use this notation, SYT sub N of H is the number uh, set of standard young tableau with height at most uh, K, uh, at most H like this. So for H, for small uh, H, the, this number uh, have nice properties, like H equals two, we have central binomial coefficient, H equals uh, three is the number of uh, Matchkin path, and H equals four is a product of Catalan numbers. If H is bigger than four, then the formula, there, there are some formulas, but it's usually more complicated. But there is a nice uh, generating function uh, discovered by uh, Gessel. This is a uh, element uh, exponential generating function for the number of standard young tableau with bounded height. So it, I'm only I only wrote uh, this odd case, but there is a similar formula for uh, the case when this number is even. So it's a generating function uh, in terms of modified Bessel functions like this. Okay, so now as there is kind of summary. So if uh, so another property that uh, we're gonna use, so Robinson Shenstein algorithm has this nice property. If uh, this, uh, the first uh, item I already mentioned, and another one is that uh, if permutation pi corresponds to uh, P, uh, P and Q, then the maximum length of decreasing subsequence of pi is, the, is exactly the height of the tableau and maximum length of increasing subsequence is the width of uh, the tableau. Width means number of columns. So for example, if this permutation corresponds to uh, two tableau like this, then you can see the maximum decreasing subsequence here is, uh, there could be several, but th four, three, two is one uh, possibility. So this, the length is three. So that uh, corresponds to the height. And the maximum increasing sequence uh, is length four that corresponds to the number of columns like that. And if we use uh, matchings, then we get uh, this uh, result. Um, this is a known, known result, by the way. Uh, we have a involution here. It corresponds to the single standard young tableau. And let's look at uh, what the height correspond to in this matching or involution. And if a standard young tableau has height less than 2K, then you can see that in this matching, we cannot have uh, K nesting, which means K set, uh, a set of K edges, which are uh, nested each other like this. So this is a 3D uh, nesting like that. Because if you have a nesting, for instance, two nesting like this, if you look at the numbers there, in the permutation, and they are all in decreasing order because this means if these two are connected, that means the, uh, the number here in the second position is six here, and then here you can see two like that. So you can see the decreasing sequence of length uh, 2K corresponds to uh, K nesting like that. So standard young tableau of height less than 2K is that has the same number as the number of involutions without k nest. So we have uh, something like this. We have uh, an equation between involutions without a uh, with a non nesting involution and standard young tableau with bounded height. But there is also a very nice uh, notion. So in involution uh, uh, nesting 
we, when you have a nesting, we can talk about crossings as well. So crossing means edges that cross each other. So we have R crossing means a set of R edges such that uh, mutually crossing edges. So this is a three crossing, for example. This is a three uh, nesting. And we say that an involution is R non-crossing if it does not have an R crossing, uh, R nest, R crossing, and S non-nesting non if it does not have a, di uh, a configuration like this. And let me denote uh, this, the set of uh, R non-crossing non non and S non-nesting involutions of uh, N, of size N. And uh, these people showed that there is a nice symmetry between and non-crossing and non-nesting. And so in particular, uh, number of non-crossing non involutions is equal to the number of uh, K non-crossing involutions equal to the K non-nesting involutions. So if we uh, go back to uh, this result, uh, I told you that the number, number of standard young table of size N with height bounded by this number is equal to K plus one non-nesting involutions. But because of the symmetry, this is also equal to the number of k plus one non-crossing involutions. And there is an obvious symmetry, the uh, standard Young tableau. So standard Young tableau with bounded height can be the, the, the same as the number of standard Young tableau with bounded width, because all, all you need to do is to take the transpose of the uh, standard Young tableau. So we have these four numbers, they are all equal, right? They're all equal. And this number is equal to uh, this. And of course, this number is equal to this. So natural question is, can we combine these two uh, conditions together? So the question is, standard young tableau of size n with height bounded by this uh, 2h plus 1 and width bounded by 2w plus 1. And the question is, is this number equal to the number of H plus one non-nesting and W plus one non-crossing involutions. So is the question clear? And can you tell me the answer? Yes or no? <laughs> um, actually, um, the answer is no. <laughs> and you can easily check that the answer is no because just imagine that N is very large. Suppose that n is very large, there is then you cannot. This number is actually zero, right? Because if n is very large, it's especially larger than this number times this number, you cannot put all your uh, squared or numbers inside this box, right? Two w plus one, two h plus one. So, and if n is very large, then this number is always zero. But here, this is always greater than zero because the uh, identity involution always satisfies this and this. So they cannot be the same. So the answer is no. So the question is, are you satisfied? <laughs> so the answer is no, but we want to find something. Um, we can, can you modify this definition and can we have some nice equation? And that's the question. And the answer is actually yes. And the correct object is this. So standard young, I'm going to define a WH cylindric uh, standard young tableau. So it's basically a standard young tableau, but uh, we must have these condi two conditions. The width is bounded by uh, W, so W stands for width. And H is related to height, but not the usual height, but um, something like this. The condition is, is the cylindric actually is, uh, is why it's written here. So you have uh, your tableau T here, a standard young tableau T with at most W. You uh, make a copy of this tableau and uh, put it by shifting it uh, to, the, uh, to the right by uh, W unit and up by H unit. So you have uh, two tableau attached like this. And if the resulting figure is still increasing each row, each column, then we say that the T is uh, WH cylindric. So for example, this standard young tableau is three, three cylindric because first of all, it has at most three rows, uh, three columns. And if you shift this to the left, uh, to the right by three and up by three, then you get uh, another copy here. If you 
put them together, uh, the numbers are still increasing. So this is okay, this is good. But this is not a three to cylindric because if you shift left, to right by three, up by two, then you see uh, this is not increasing to, uh, this way. So this is not good. I, I mean, not a three to cylindric, but it is three, three cylindric. And this is uh, the reason why it's called cylindric is that, so imagine that this is attached like uh, infinitely in this way, and then you can just uh, make a cut here and here, and then you can wrap them together, then you can uh, put them, you can draw them in a cylinder. That's, that's why it's called the cylindric uh, SYT. And uh, our result is this. So let me denote uh, the set of H, a W, H cylindric standard young tableau of size N in this way. So cylindric standard young tableau of size N, a W, H cylindric of size N. And our result is this. This is the correct object. So the number of cylindric young tableau, uh, cylindric standard young tableau with this is equal to uh, the number of W plus one non crossing, uh, W H plus one non nesting involution. So this is, uh, our result. So, but uh, the, we prove this uh, not bijectively. So finding a bijective proof is still open. So I think it's everything is explained in purely combinatorial way. So there should be some nice way to prove this combinatorially. But yeah, we couldn't find it yet. So it would, it would be great if uh, one of you can find a bijective proof. So now uh, let me. Uh, talk about how we discovered uh, this uh, theorem. So in fact, uh, the result was somewhat unexpected because we were working on something else. The connection was not very clear at the beginning. So our original motivation was to prove a, uh, a result of Motimer and Prebo bijectively. So their result uh, goes like this. So Mochkin path is a lattice path in this first quadrant consisting of up steps, down steps, and horizontal steps, uh, horizontal of length one, uh, so, so that it stays in this uh, first quadrant. And we are interested in Mochkin path of length n uh, with bounded height. So this is one side, the so number of Mochkin path of length n with bounded height. And their result says that this number is equal to certain um, Number, number of certain lattice, lattice walk in a triangular region. So we have a triangle uh, lattice like this, and it's bounded. It's uh, like a, this is, is length four. And let, let me denote this by uh, delta k. So delta k is this triangle. And we are interested in counting number of uh, uh, lattice path, lattice walk starting from the origin or this point consisting of three steps. So as long as it stays in this region, it's fine. It's, it may self-intersect or yeah, something like that. But I think uh, so. Their result is this: number of Mochkin path with bounded height equals the number of lattice, uh, lattice walk in this uh, triangular region of length n. But uh, this number right here is h. It is two h plus one. So for example, when n equals three and h equals one, we have Mochkin path like this and triangle uh, in the triangle, uh, we have uh, four lattice path like that. So we wanted to find a uh, bijective proof because I thought this is very uh, interesting and very, very nice and simple uh, result. Because I also thought that it should be simple, but it's not. It, is, uh, it was not easy for me. And the way we discovered our result is that we tried to change this into uh, involution because Mochkin path can easily be identified with an involution or matching. So whenever you see an up step, you draw on half arc. And for a horizontal step, you have just a fixed point, and et cetera. So that does not crossing. And it, and we have uh, non-crossing or two non-crossing involution. And the height corresponds to uh, H plus one non-nesting. Non and here, when you have a lattice path in this triangle uh, region, we can make it into a, a sequence of partitions. 
So whenever we go this direction, we add a cell in first column, this direction, we add a cell in the second column, and this direction, add a cell in the third column, etc. I like that. Then this uh, is a sequence of uh, partition, and this can be uh, understood as a standard Young tableau. So whenever you add a cell, you uh, encode that cell with a number. Then this can be seen as, but it's not difficult to see that this is in fact, the same thing as three, two H plus one cylindric standard Young tableau. So their result can be uh, described in this way. So what Timo Preibos result is, uh, can be rephrased in this way. Non, two non-crossing, non H plus one non-nesting involutions. Uh, the number, this number is equal to cylindric standard Young tableau, uh, three and uh, two H plus one cylindric standard Young tableau. Then our result uh, is generalizes this. So here, if a w equals one, we get uh, their result back. And actually, uh, this Motimo and Prebox result was proved recently, or maybe two, two or so years ago, by uh, yeah, these people. So it might be a good try to see if their uh, projection or their idea works to prove this. But we haven't tried that yet. OK, so this is our result and our and the motivation. And now let me tell you how we prove this result. So here is this, our result again. And the idea of proof is as follows. We express each side as the number of certain lattice work in an alcove, actually. And so we have one side, we, uh, uh, we have a less path here, number of less path, and another a different kind of less path here, and express each number as uh, using determ some kind of formula using determinant. And at the end, we have some formula identity, uh, determinant equal determinant. So all we need to do is to prove that these determinants, or we have some sorts of mentions like that, we can just use determinant techniques to prove this identity. So this shows that uh, they have the same generating functions, therefore the identity holds. So that is the outline of the idea of the proof. Okay, so how did we do that? So here we have a uh, standard Young tableau or cylindric standard Young tableau. This can easily be encoded uh, using uh, lattice, lattice work. So just like I did just a few slides before, so one, two, three, four, five. So you just uh, make it as a sequence of uh, growing uh, partitions like that. And partitions, after all, is a sequence of numbers, right? But we will read this instead of reading rows. We will read a column. So please, this is zero, 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 assuming that we have at, at most three columns: zero, zero, zero. So one, zero, zero, one, one, zero, uh, one, one, one. 2, 1, 1, like that, etc. So we have a sequence of points in R3 now, or Z3. And this, uh, with some steps, we have uh, three steps allowed, like that. So this is an example, but uh, it works in general. So this cylindric standard Young tableau correspond to uh, lattice work of in this region, which is it happens to be an alcove of affine vial group of type uh, A, A, A tilde. So it's lattice work in alcove. And on the other side, we have involutions or non crossing, non nesting involutions. And we can interpret this also as a, a sequence of partitions. But it's called a vacillating tableau, which is basically a sequence of partitions. But instead of the sequence like here, which is always growing, but we may have, uh, we may add one cell or do nothing or remove one cell. So each, if you look at two consecutive partitions, they are differ by at most uh, one cell. They may be the same. So there is uh, also a nice and well-known bijection between involutions and vacillating tableau. And if you restrict these involutions to uh, non-crossing and non-nesting involutions, then uh, it has nice uh, description here, it's still a vacillating tableau, and every partition must be uh, contained in this box, height, h, and width, w. So 
the point is, and so basically uh, the algorithm basically RSK, but uh, I'm gonna skip this part. So the idea is, so basically this is also in one-to-one -one correspondence with a lattice work in a different alcohol. In this case, the alcohol is um, type C and tilde. So now we have everything in terms of lattice path. And fortunately, um, there is already a known result on the number of lattice walks in an alcohol. And using their result, we can translate our uh, theorem into uh, generating functions like this. We have a formula for this and another formula for its generating function. So everything translated into just a one, uh, one equation. So this I identity we wanted to prove is just uh, identity like this. So we need to prove this identity. And in fact, we are far, we've proved a more general version of this, a symmetric function version of this. So symmetric function version, I don't think I have uh, enough time to uh, speak, but I think I, I can at least take the result. So show function, the generative function for semi-standard young tableau. Yeah. I'll skip that. And there is a nice uh, Jacobi Trudy formula for short functions. And Gordon Bender Knuth identity is a formula for the sum of short functions uh, or short function prime if you use uh, this. And uh, with bounded height in, in terms of uh, some symmetric function, which is uh, infinite sum of two, a product of two. Uh, elementary symmetric function. So this is a kind of um, result like long before, 40 years ago or 50 years ago, yeah. And now we're back to using this row strict tableau. And I'm gonna define WH cylindric row strict tableau, which is row strict tableau and it is the same condition as we saw before. Like a w suite, uh, shift to the right W unit and up by uh, H unit. And if it's still satisfying the same uh, equation, uh, inequalities, we say there's a cylindri WH cylindry. And th uh, there is a similar Jacobi Trudy formula for cylindric short function. So meaning that generating function for cylindric uh, row strip tableau can be written in terms of uh, determinant of elementary symmetric functions. And now we can state our uh, result. I find Gordon Bender Knuth. So Gordon Bender Knuth identity, uh, I restated the theorem uh, like this. So generating function for a uh, row strip tableau with bounded height. Okay. And here our result is a fine version of this because here instead of row strict, we have cylindric row strict tableau. We have a generating function for this, and we have. Um, we, have, we have more sums, we have somewhat similar looking formula like that. And we prove this using, by uh, converting this into Fafians and then applying some uh, uh, result reduction formula due to you know, Ishikawa and Wakayama. And we have some corollaries. I only mentioned this, but if these numbers are even, one of them is even, we have similar uh, result. But when both are even, we have uh, less satisfying result, but we have at least some kind of combinatorial uh, interpretation in terms of science. And if W equals one, these two are reduced to multi more probable result. And these two, uh, we have some other combinatorial result, which is non-trivial as well. And we were able to prove in this case uh, using bijections. Uh, recently no, uh, discovered by Jackson due to uh, these people. And yeah, I think it's, it's about time to finish. Uh, thank you for your attention.